All right, so welcome to this video on five tips on exploring accessibility. Uh, accessibility, when I talk about it in this context, is really thinking about the range of practices that we have that make sure we're able to uh, include everybody in the classroom, regardless of any potential disabilities or challenges that they may have. Um, in accessing or engaging in the class content. And so you'll see some of these may, ref may uh, reference things such as people with visual disabilities who might have trouble seeing or people who have uh, trouble hearing. Uh, so a lot of these are here, uh, people with uh, learning disabilities or, or different types of things that can impede their learning. And so this video is here to just give a, some support and some ideas on how to reduce some of that tension uh, as you're starting to create your different teaching and learning experiences. Uh, and there's also some really good tips for, uh, for you to share with students as well. So the first I'm a big fan of, which is always um, playing the closed caption whenever you're using video. And I may have mentioned this before in other videos, but this I think is really important, not just for uh, people who might have hearing challenges. It's also useful for people who English is a second language. And in fact, the largest user of closed caption are people whose hearing is totally fine, uh, but find it useful given that there's lots of other noise going on and that can have some interference. Uh, myself, I'm dyslexic, and in fact, my dyslexia manifests in hearing or having certain hearing challenges. And so I can hear perfectly fine. I can't always make it, make it out. And so having closed captioning on is really, really important. Uh, typically, you can find the, the closed captions if you're playing a video that is on some type of website or something like that. YouTube is obviously the most popular, but typically you'll see it somewhere in the play bar. So when you go to hit play, there's usually a few other options that are there, and you just want to look for that one and uh, and activate those. I do want to give you a heads up that you know you want to give preference to closed captioning that has actually been done as opposed to auto closed caption. Auto closed caption is okay. Uh, the the tools on YouTube, for instance, they they're okay. They may be accurate mostly with the words, but they're inaccurate because they don't have any punctuation. And punctuation in this case does matter. And it's really important to understand what is being said and where the stops are in all of that. Okay. And then the other thing is that if you are running a Zoom session, you can actually have closed captionings, uh, auto closed captioning happening in Zoom. Now, I just said they're not that great. The Zoom uh, option is actually a bit better than what you see on YouTube uh, auto closed captioning. And it's really simple to activate. In fact, I include a link there. Uh, if you go to bit.ly uh, forward slash capital C, capital U, capital Z, uh, as in Zoom, and capital T tip, and you can go to that link. And there's a short video there on how to turn on closed captioning so that if you're running a session, you and your students can access that. The other cool thing if you're thinking about doing closed captioning is that if you're in Google Slides and using Chrome, you can actually activate the uh, you can actually activate the closed captioning just by coming down to this little toolbar here. And you want to select the uh, caption preferences and you can turn them on. And uh, it'll ask you to allow for your microphone. You want to say yes. And what you should see at the bottom of the screen is the actual words that I am speaking. So if you are going to present and you maybe uh, are not in Zoom or you're at a presentation in front of other people and you want to make sure that they can potentially see and hear what you are saying, this is a great option to have. I'm going to turn it off because this video will have closed captioning and this is uh, a bit redundant, especially again, as you can see, they don't necessarily have punctuation. So let's turn that off and the next tip is adjusting the display. Uh, this is always a big, uh, a, an important thing to do, especially if you're presenting, uh, especially if you're recording. You always want to make sure you have you have text that is pretty visual. Uh, thinking about the different types of ways students might be looking at that. If you're in a classroom, obviously you you're going to want you know big broad text so everybody in the class can see. But they, if you're recording a video, you also want to think about it because they may be looking at that video on their phone or a tablet or a computer, and you want to make sure there's 
not too much text on the screen, and then also that it can be seen pretty well. So a simple way to do that is, of course, if you're doing slides and the like, obviously you, you can adjust the font size to 16, 18, 20. Uh, what I typically try to do is not to use anything under 20 if I'm doing slides at least of the text that I want people to see. If you notice down the bottom, I have the image source. That's not as relevant information. So I typically keep that at a 10 or 12. But the information I want them to really pay attention to is going to be 20 or higher. Uh, but if you're on a website uh, or in a, a document of some sort and you want to increase the text size so people can see it without adjusting the actual font size, you can press the control button or command button on Mac and the plus button button if you want the size to go higher and the minus button if you want it to go smaller. Uh, the other thing you want students or I would encourage you to, to let students know is that within the accessibility features in their phone, there is a lot of options around the sizing of text, the coloring of text, the contrast. Those are all really important things. Uh, they're important things for you too when you're displaying is to make sure you have a good contrast, you know, a black on white or uh, colors that, that stick out and don't mesh. Uh, as somebody who also has color division, it can sometimes be really hard to read things if the colors don't have that strong contrast. Uh, the other is, and this is one really letting your students know, really encouraging them to play around with, is adjusting the playing speed for video and audio. Uh, one thing I often recommend is particularly having them see what works better for them, playing it slower or playing it faster. Because sometimes when we talk about you know, the, the challenge of being distracted, sometimes we're getting distracted because the information isn't coming at us at the right speed. So if we're watching a video and that video is going at a deliberate pace, just like I am now, for some people, that's going to give them, you know, the, the, their minds are, may wander. And so what I often encourage is people who find that their minds may wander may want to play it a little bit faster, may want to listen a little bit faster because then it's harder to wander because you have to keep your attention focused. Um, so I would just say encourage students to play around with that, have them adjust it, you know, see what works for them, and then also encourage them to recognize that it will change for different content. Content that I'm more familiar with, I will play faster. Content that I'm less familiar with, I might slow it down a little bit, or I might just re-listen to it once or twice. Uh, but really encourage them to find what is the right speed for them. Another really important thing is uh, text to speech. Now, this is there's a variety of reasons why students could use this, um, both in terms of uh, accessibility or what, what their their time availability is, uh, but really helping students know that basically nearly all devices have text to speech tools embedded in them this is an accessibility feature and so it's you can often go into your different devices and unlock these tools uh, but also things like browsers and document programs like word or uh, adobe pdf they also have text to speech programs within them and so what you know again you want to encourage students to customize customize it for their personal use. And what I've included in there is another link which identifies or gives links to how you can adjust or address the different types of text to speech programs on your, you know, on your cell phone devices on uh, within computers and things like that. And so that's bit.ly, uh, again, bit.ly, uh, capital C, capital U, and text to speech and the T and the S in text and speech are capitalized. And then finally, uh, the big tip that I, I recommend in thinking about even having students come up with this list in terms of having them go out and play with these as, a, as an assignment, uh, especially if you're a lab faculty or uh, is really recognizing there's several other types of really great tools out there, some around timed concentration, uh, such as time focus apps like the Pomodoro, Tree and Tomato Timer. All of those work around the concept of, you know, turning everything else off and just focusing and doing 20, 20 or 25 minutes of concentrated work and then a five minute break and then another 20, 25 minute, you know, 
a stint and then another five minute break. Uh, there's also ambient noise or sound focused uh, apps that can reduce distractions such as Lo-Fi Cafe. There's a lot of YouTube music stations where it'll be like three or four hours of lo-fi or ambient sound. Uh, my partner actually really loves that. Uh, there's several stations that they have like really old music, but it's, it's distant enough, like it's playing in a different room. And then there's also a thunderstorm. And so it's this mixture of like music and, and ambient sound that uh, allows her, and I've certainly used it to focus a lot. Uh, and there's a couple other options there to check out. And then there's other apps and tools that allow you to uh, turn off everything but the thing that you're working on. And so there's a there's Duo, Duo, uh, Freedom, Focus Me, Leech Block. Um, these are all really good ones if you need some ent outside entity to kind of like block. Oh, I can't open up these sites or these apps. I can only focus on this particular thing during this chunk of time. Uh, these apps will help uh, or will prevent you from opening those other things until you're you've set the amount of time or completed the amount of time you've set. And then finally, there's, there's, a, there's one that I, I'm a big fan of, um, and I don't necessarily recommend it, but I think it's an amusing one out there, and that's the Penalty app, uh, Stick. And this works by, as the name can indicate, uh, you sit down to, to do something or to plan something out, or uh, you kind of set yourself a timer to really work on something. And if you don't meet the, the, the marker that you make, uh, Stick will donate five, 10, whatever amount of money you decide to some entity. And so the idea is that like, if you don't really focus, then, you know, your, your money, your resources uh, will, will be further moved away. Um, you know, it's a playful one. I, I don't necessarily strongly recommend it, but it's one that's out there that some people uh, apparently have found really useful. Uh, so those are uh, just a couple different tools and apps that you might take a look at. Um, that's all I have for this round. Take a look at the resources uh, and feel free to make use of any of those. And if you have other tips, other ideas around accessibility, around helping students be able to do the work or feel like they're supported in the work, uh, despite any kind of things that might be standing in their way, feel free to uh, send them along. I'd love to do more videos around this topic because I think it's a really important topic uh, that often we aren't always thinking about, um, but really should be. So thank you all so much and have a great day.